Summer's gone, the nights are closing in, the leaves are turning, it must be time for the pumpkin spice latte. And it is. And today we're going to make the ultimate pumpkin spice latte, but to start with, I've got a benchmark. I'm going to go to Starbucks and buy one. Success! So we're down at Tower Bridge because this is where the nicest Starbucks in London is and it seemed the best place to go and get one of these. And let's have a taste. Ginger, a little bit of cinnamon, the other spices are way down. Very sweet, incredibly sweet. And technically some pumpkin is in the pumpkin spice latte for reasons I don't truly understand. So now I wanna make my own ultimate version of this. If we're gonna put pumpkin in this, well, we should work out which pumpkin we should put in it. So we're gonna to go to Borough Market try and buy a bunch of pumpkins uh, and, and then head back to the studio and start cooking it up. Let's start with pumpkins. And I know that's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure pumpkin spice lattes started without pumpkin in them. They were just like a cafe latte with the spice mix that people use for pumpkin pie. And that's a, a classic spice mix that we're gonna to touch on in a minute. But at some point, people started putting pumpkin in the drink. Stop, 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 stop. What I was doing, I think, was, was all wrong. Let me explain. The original idea for the video was to kind of make a sauce that tasted just like pumpkin pie. This is a really popular approach online, and ultimately, I don't think that's the right approach for me. You know, I wanted to find the perfect pumpkin, taste a bunch of different ones, use that to create a pumpkin puree, but by the time I was sieving out my blended pumpkin puree, I, I just wasn't happy. I felt like I was complicating other people's work, and there had to be a different, a fresh approach. Now this whole thing had started when I'd gone to the website and looked at Starbucks's ingredients for their pumpkin spice sauce. And you can see things like pumpkin puree or condensed milk in there, but I was haunted by this. A little sample of the syrup that they had given me in Starbucks. This, aside from being a tremendous color, well, it doesn't have pumpkin puree in it. It's a clear sauce. It doesn't have condensed milk in it. And then I realized this year they're launching in the UK a kind of vegan version because this, if you taste it, it's really just like a cinnamon syrup with a hint of a few other spices. But I liked the idea of something that worked for everybody, something that didn't exclude people who don't want to drink dairy. Now, I, I do kind of love the color of that, but I also love the color of pumpkins. And so what I want to do is capture some of that color of pumpkin, but I don't want solids. I don't want any pureed pumpkin. I don't want to have to cook bits of pumpkin. None of that is interesting to me. So what we're going to do from the beginning is juice a pumpkin. What's going to make this recipe notable, I think, is the spice selection. So pumpkin spice mix is a, is a pre sort of made spice mixture you can buy in much of the US that contains five different spices. We're going to go deep on sourcing spices in just a second, but to start with, I'm going to take one of these pumpkins, I'm going to juice it down, uh, and that will be the beginning of this whole thing. Now, when you're juicing a pumpkin, uh, know that you'll get about 50% yield. If you juice 100 grams of pumpkin flesh, you'll get about 50 grams, a little bit less, of juice out of that. So when you look at the recipe and decide how much of this mixture you want to make, that will decide how much pumpkin you want to start with. You don't need one this big. You could go for something much smaller, like a little kabocha, if you like the flavor of those a little bit more. This jahadale is very big. I'm not going to use all of it by any stretch. I'm going to start with about 500 grams of pumpkin flesh to give me about 250 grams of pumpkin juice. I'm someone who thinks about things through a lens of coffee. So the idea that different spices should taste different if they're grown in different places, well, that makes total sense to me. So I went out and I bought a ton of different spices from different origins with as much traceability as I could find. At the end of this, there'll be links to these particular spices down below. So the biggest component of, of a pumpkin spice blend traditionally is cinnamon. Now you can go two ways with cinnamon. You can go down the traditional cinnamon quills route, or you can use what's called cassia bark. Now I want to use both because they have two quite different characteristics of cinnamon. The cassia bark, in this case it's from Vietnam, smells amazing. It's that kind of candy cinnamon, it's that jelly bean cinnamon, that very bright, lively, hot, spicy cinnamon, almost cartoonish 
You know what I mean? It's almost artificial, but so, so incredibly good. Uh, but it needs some balance. And what I loved about these, these are Sri Lankan cinnamon quills, is that you've got that warmer, slightly earthier, slightly rounder experience of cinnamon. They're absolutely cinnamon, but it's a totally different thing. And, and by combining equal parts of these two, we get this broad spectrum of cinnamon's taste and aromatics that is incredibly enjoyable. So second ingredient that's really important is ginger. This is something I tasted quite strongly in the Starbucks drink, though I, I might have just put it there with my mind. It's hard to find traceable ginger powder. Uh, a lot of what I tasted came from India, and that was the kind of heavier, almost earthier ginger. This from China, I really liked. It was a bit more aromatic, kind of zestier, fresher, brighter, still that good bit of heat from there too. Really very enjoyable. So that's gonna be our secondary component. Clove is a difficult one for me. I had an accident, sort of, with, with a kind of super critical extract of cloves, which, which scarred me for life. Um, I find it quite a challenging smell and taste, and ultimately cloves easily overwhelm everything. So we're gonna use this extremely sparingly. These ones are Sri Lankan. Uh, a lot of it comes from Indonesia too, but I just slightly preferred these Sri Lankan ones. All of that pungency that you want from clove, but, but almost a little bit sweeter, which was very nice. Now, nutmeg is one of my favorite spices, just because it looks so beautiful when you cut open into it. This one is from a French company called Epice Rollinger, I think. Uh, it's from uh, Grenada. And, and it smells amazing. Now this, in particular, you need to grind fresh, or grate fresh in many dishes, because it fades very fast. But we're coffee people. We're used to grinding stuff to order. The last spice in the mix is allspice. I don't know a ton about it. I struggle to find much variety of it, and the ones that I did get, really there wasn't a huge variation, so don't stress out too much hunting for the perfect allspice, was my experience so far. Now, like I said, we're coffee people, we think like coffee people. What's gonna make this whole recipe much more interesting is that we're gonna grind our spice mix to order. Now, maybe like me, you've got an old blade grinder lying around, and that is completely perfect. This is just a cheap Krups one, I think it was like 15 pounds. It's what we're gonna be using today. Everything in the grinder, grind until it's a nice fine powder. It may take a little while and give it a shake now and again as you go. On to the next stage where we're gonna make the spiced syrup. We're gonna take our weight of pumpkin juice here and we're gonna add an equal amount of water. I'm use the same jar, it's okay. Now the ultimate syrup that we're aiming for is gonna be more akin to a two to one syrup where it's two parts sugar, one part water. But to start with, we're gonna make it a one to one. So here I've got about 450 grams of liquid. So I'm gonna take 450 grams of Demerara sugar. You can go for something a little browner if you want to, but I figure that's just brown enough to be that little bit of softening that we like. Uh, and then we're gonna cook it to reduce it until it's closer to a two to one syrup. That cooking process will transform the flavor of the pumpkin juice from being that kind of very fresh but slightly vegetal green kind of flavor into more of a cooked flavor. And it'll be pretty muted as flavor goes by the time it's all kind of finished. And we're gonna to add to this about 20 grams of the spice mixture and we're gonna cook it all down together. So onto the heat and give it a little whisk to stir, get that sugar dissolved. So we cook stuff down now. But the important phase we need is a bit of separation. I don't want any bits in my syrup. Now, I'm a bit unusual and I have a very fine drum sieve lying around because I'm a bit weird. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it through this. It's about 90 microns, so extremely fine. But it would be perfectly acceptable to use something like uh, cheesecloth or, or muslin. And then once strained and happy, you can transfer it to your squeeze bottle. We're good to go. Let's make a drink. Now it's not entirely up to me to tell you how much syrup to use. I don't like things too much on the sweet side. So in what is an eight ounce drink, I'm gonna max out for me at about 15 grams of syrup that I'm just gonna mix into my espresso before adding my steamed milk. Now at this point you could be using a plant milk of some sort, depends what you like, be it oat or anything else. I'm having a lovely, very simple little experience. For some people maybe too sweet, for some people not sweet enough. The spice level is very pleasant, it's very balanced. Even with dairy in this particular drink, you can get the extra layers of complexity, of kind of flavor release that come with some really great spices sourced from different parts of the world. I would absolutely beg you, go, go and source some interesting spices from different places, taste the difference, it's eye-opening. What I didn't do yet, was actually do a direct comparison between what I have here and what I have here. Start with a little taste of the Starbucks syrup. What a color. Kind of a, a very simplistic cinnamon, 
a very big whack of cloves, which I'm just not chasing personally. Interesting acidity there, I suspect um, that might be part of its preservative, uh, you know, component there. Let's compare it to something a little bit more traceable. Homemade, aromatic, worlds apart. So much complexity, warmth, depth, breadth of flavor, room for each of those spices to come out. That is very nice. That is really nice, and it's because it's got good ingredients. It's the lesson that coffee, I hope, teaches all of us, which is good ingredients are kind of the key to everything else. We can go further. We should go for like a, a more complete build of this thing. Now, if you're curious about any of the stuff going on here, there's links to it down below. There's a recipe linked on a website, a website that I built with this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. When it's time for me to build a website, I always turn to Squarespace. It doesn't matter if it's a website for me and a portfolio of the work that I do, or if it's for an event like the World's Largest Coffee Tasting, or a showcase for my book, The World Atlas of Coffee. For me, it's so easy that I can start with one of their templates and very quickly transform it into being something that's truly my own. My words, my images, my style. Very quickly, you can go from an idea to a beautiful representation of who you are or what you do online. And more than that, once that website's up, you know it's gonna look good across any and all browsers and there's nothing to patch, upgrade or install. There's no maintenance to really worry about, but there is 24 seven email support. I would say, don't take my word for it. Go sign up for a trial down below, build something. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or any domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So the last part of this drink build to make it the ultimate pumpkin spice latte is gonna be some whipped cream. Now. Maybe like me, you're kind of put off by that because at this point we've got quite a lot of milk of some sort, plus sugar, plus spices. The coffee's kind of getting obliterated by all the other stuff going on here. Uh, and having whipped cream on top, well, surely that's only gonna make it worse. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a special coffee infused whipped cream to go on top to make it extremely delicious. Just think about this as a pumpkin spice latte topped with a little almost coffee ice cream. To start with, we're just gonna use 10 fluid ounces or 280 mils, more sensibly, of double cream. To that, we're gonna add uh, the seeds and a half of vanilla bean pod. You could use paste if you wanted to, but if you have a vanilla bean pod lying around, it's a pretty good use for it. Pour it in two. And then for whipped cream, I generally like about 5% weight of sugar. Just white sugar is totally fine. And then we're gonna add 10 grams of pretty coarsely ground coffee. We want it nice and easy to strain out later, so don't bother going too fine. It's gonna give up its flavor pretty quickly and will be delicious. Throw that on the heat, gently, just to warm it up just a little bit to get some infusion going on. So once it's done, you're just gonna strain it out. It's taking on some very nice color. Then this is gonna go into your whipping siphon. I'm gonna chill it down, charge it, and then we're ready for the final drink build. Before we steam our milk, we'll just get our syrup in. Now, when it comes to steaming your milk, if you're gonna add whipped cream, know that your foam is still gonna be lighter than the whipped cream, so the whipped cream will sink into the foam. So you want as little foam as you can get away with, uh, just like a nice silky texture that you might use for a flat white or a latte. We don't need to worry about latte art either. And then a little dusting of our spices. And what we have here is an oozing and decadent treat Mmm, there is a lovely little hit of coffee up front from that cold, sweet, vanilla-y coffee cream. Then that kind of warm spiciness underneath. It's sweet, but it's not overwhelming. It's, it's autumnal. It's, your, what, it's what you want autumn to taste like. A little bit messy, but it's just delicious. There it is, the ultimate pumpkin spice latte. I am very pleased with the result. If you did want to do the whipped cream, but a vegan version using say coconut, do the same thing in terms of the amount of coffee and the amount of sugar and the amount of vanilla bean going in there and you'll have a very similar result. Did it taste of pumpkin? No, not really. Did that count as one of my five a day still? Probably not also. Was it delicious? Was it fun to make? Was it interesting? Was it beautiful? I think so. And I think you should give it a go too. I think this is so interesting to me to look at other ingredients through the lens of coffee, right? To think about spices like you think about coffee and in doing so, I learned a ton, I discovered what I like, I discovered a whole new range of flavors, and I made an end result that while many consider trashy, I think shows a kind of taste of place. It shows providence, it shows some transparency in its flavors, and I think that's kind of cool as well as just being incredibly delicious.
but let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you give this a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you struggle to find some spices you like. Let me know if you do a little spice tasting and your mind is blown like mine was. I would love to hear from all of you down in the comments below. There's a link to the recipe, to all of the ingredients down in the description. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.